earth down there, but, uh, but hey, my name is John, if we haven't met, and I'm excited to, to bring the word this morning. We're having a pause in our Malachi series, which is good. I can share kind of some of the things that God's laid on my heart, which would be good, and we're going to be diving into a passage uh, in John, John 7, um, if you have your Bibles. Anyone bring their paper Bibles these days, or is it just, yeah, we have one at the back, come on, the really spiritual people, um, that's good. I brought mine just so I could say that this morning, I don't normally, um, no, but it is good if you want to turn to that, John 7. And we're looking into a teaching where, where Jesus says, anyone who is thirsty, come. He's talking about thirst. He teaches on thirst. Now, before we do get into that, is as anyone remember a moment in your life where you were just so thirsty and it's like, you're almost like, and it's dramatic, it's going to sound dramatic, very first world problem. You're just like, I don't know if I'm ever going to drink again. Like, I am just so thirsty in this moment. Anyone had it? Maybe you're going for a run or something, or you're just like, I don't know. You're, you're just so thirsty. Now, I feel like this is, um, quite a, probably a sensitive, maybe something that's right in front of me right now is just because I have toddlers, so I have a, a four-year-old and a two-year-old, and I feel like there is no one thirstier in the world than kids, okay? Anyone ever is, young, young kids in particular, and they go from like, kind of like they've just had a drink to like, I am like in desperate need for water from like in 0.1 seconds. Like, it's just like, they are like so, so thirsty. Um, our, our boys, when they were kind of learning to talk, you know, didn't, didn't even know what the kind of word for water was. And so they, you know, Harvey was, was actually mup. So he was, I don't know why he called water mup, but he would go, you know, all of a sudden in the car, we might pick him up from school or something. And it's just like in that moment, all of a sudden, mup, 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 mup. Like, I just need, I need mup, I need water. I need, like, I'm so thirsty. And it was like genuine disaster if you didn't like solve it right then. You're like pulling over to a serve. Like you're just literally trying to do whatever you can. Now, it was interesting because Brooksy's, his word was, was titter. Um, which I won't say quick and I won't say again um, because, you know, it might be... Uh, I don't know where he got that from, but um, I think it was the end of water. But, uh, you know, and so it was interesting when he was kind of, you know, a bit thirsty uh, as, as well. Um, but for me, I, you know, all my kind of thirsty moments uh, when I was kind of, you know, I guess, you know, I can think about it is normally on the bike, okay? I'm a bit of a cyclist myself. I like it. And, you know, I, yes, I do have to include cycling in every message. And so, you know, I was thirsty and, um, you know, I run out of water. And my, I want to kind of just check a tactic with you guys. My tactic is when I'm on the, wa- on the bike, you know, maybe I'm, you know, on the way home and I'm like, I'm just not going to make it. You know, I need, I need some water. My tactic is is much to my wife's disapproval, is just finding a house with a tap at the front and just, like, just any random house and just filling up my drink bottle. Does anyone think that's legit? Is that okay? Like, give me a nod if, or give me a, maybe give me a shake if you think that's not okay. I think that's legit, okay? I, I like, you know, I feel like water's a shared resource, you know? Um, I, if they were there, if they were home, I would have asked. Um, I do sneak kind of there. It is awkward. I'm like in the lycra, and like clickety-clack, you know, just kind of trying to be real sneaky, but gee whiz, it's not sneaky at all, and I get my water. Um, a bit of a first world problem, but we've, we've all been there. We all know the feeling of thirst. We found ourselves thirsty. And so this is what Jesus speaks into. Um, he speaks into to thirst. He says, anyone who is thirsty, come to me. Now, we know he wasn't speaking just about a physical thirst, but he's speaking about something a little bit deeper. He's speaking about a, a spiritual thirst, a soul thirst that we all have. So we're going to jump into to John 7 and read that together. If you want to get to John 7, verses 37 to 39, we'll read that. Actually, other question. Does anyone get super thirsty thinking about being thirsty? Um, I think I need some water, right? Uh, no, uh, no, it's all good. Um, geez. Um, we're going to read. So it says, On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood in a loud voice. Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as Scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Now up until that time, the Spirit had not yet been given, since Jesus had not yet been glorified. So this was a, a public announcement that Jesus makes. It says on the last and the greatest day of the festival. It's quite a significant claim that he's making, and it's quite a, a big statement. And now for us to completely understand the significance of what he's saying, we'll actually unpack some of the words that he said. But for us to understand the significance of particularly the original audience, the time um, that he said this, we actually need to understand a little bit about the festival that he uh, said this out, this, this claim, this um. So it was this festival of the, the tabernacles. It was uh, you know, a festival that would go for seven days. It was one that was really important in Jewish culture. And it was 
You know, this statement was made on the last and the greatest day of the festival. Now, what would happen at this festival was um, it was like a sacred assembly. They would, you know, do some water drawing and pouring ceremonies. They would, they would sing together. They would uh, read from Ezekiel and Zechariah. And so they'd read these scriptures uh, from, from the Old Testament. And, and actually, it spoke of these, uh, these rivers of living water coming from the temple. So, that, so Jesus' words and this announcement would have been particularly relevant. It would have been something that's kind of, you know, floating around in the back of their mind, something that was, was there that they understood. Now, another layer to this was that in the lead up to this and kind of surrounding this moment, there was a lot of division around who Jesus was, a lot of division. There was those who, you know, were curious about Jesus, you know, following him, disciples and people like that. And, and they're like, you know, maybe this guy could be the one. Maybe it's true what he's saying. Maybe, you know, the miracles he's performing, you know, maybe he is the Messiah, the one that we've been looking for. And of course, there was people on the other end of the spectrum that were saying, you know, that he's a complete fraud, that they were basically, you know, he's, he's not who he says he is, and, you know, and they were plotting to kill him. So Jesus, in this moment, with this public announcement, he's really making it clear to everyone. He's saying, this is who I am. If you had any, any doubts, you know, this is the moment where I kind of clear it up. Now, keeping a couple things in mind, the Jewish people believe that the Messiah would actually bring food and water. It's kind of part of the, the messianic prophecies, and it was like, you know, just as Moses had brought food and water, um, you know, years ago. And so for him to come and say, you know, come to me and drink, I am living water. And if you've read the chapter before, if you've got your paper Bibles, you might be able to see. In chapter six, he actually talks about also that I am the bread of life, essentially saying, I am food, I am water. This is the the kind of the drop the mic moment for Jesus. He's like, you know, this is who I am. It's Jesus announcing himself as the Messiah, He's saying, I am God. I am the one that you've been looking for. It's the, there's been division and, you know, people wondering, curious, you know, is this the guy? He says, no, 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 I am the one that you've been looking for. You want water that comes from the, the temple? You've got to come to me. I am living water. So you can understand how, on one hand, it was so profound what Jesus is saying. It's, you know, there's so much depth to it. But also, on the other hand, it's quite controversial, for, particularly for the people at the time. It would have kind of further split his audience. And so we're going to look at a few different phrases um, of the scriptures that we just, that we just read and, and unpack a little bit what Jesus was, was saying here. And the first line he says is, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Now, the first thing that stands out for me straight away is just the open nature to the invitation that Jesus is extending, the open nature. I don't know if you can catch the, uh, the phrases there that he says, you know, let anyone who, let anyone come. You know, he, he, in a few verses down or like a few um, words down, he says, so let anyone, but also says whoever believes, whoever believes. It's almost as if he's saying, no matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, no matter your story up until this point, your access to the Spirit is open. And actually you have access to living water. You have access. If you're thirsty, come along. Now, uh, again, we know he wasn't talking about a physical thirst. He's talking about a soul thirst. But I think he was also using the fact that they probably would have been quite physically thirsty um, to kind of draw this out. It was a hot area. Um, water supplies for some would have been low. They, you know, this festival is a water ceremony. Um, so, like I said, you know, you're kind of thirsty, looking at the water, um, the, essentially praying for water and and rain. And so, when Jesus says, "Let anyone who is thirsty," it's almost like a talk about stating the obvious kind of moment. It's like Jesus, like, of course, like everyone here is thirsty. Everyone's thirsty, and he's almost overstating the point here that anybody is welcome. You know, thirst as the great equalizer, something that we've all experienced, something that everyone in all humanity experiences. We all need water to survive. It doesn't matter um, if you're rich, if you're low standing, your, your race, if you're, you know, close to God or near, from, near to God, or it doesn't matter if it's your first time or your 500th time here this morning. But Jesus is saying, everyone has a place. If you thirst, let anyone come to me and drink. Everyone is welcome. Now, here's the thing. I don't think the problem is that we are thirsty, as we've kind of just established. But probably the question is, who do we run to and what do we fill our lives with? 
with that thirst that we have? Who do we run to and what do we fill our lives with? Now back to my bike again. Um, the Tour de France is starting, uh, like it's just started, so I'm, I'm excited, okay? So give me two analogies. Is that all right in the cycling uh, arena? No, but I'm on my bike and I am, I am like so thirsty. Like this is kind of like, you know, all, like I'm starting to have hallucinations. Like I'm just like, I'm feeling like, gee whiz. I'm, I know in those movies when, you know, someone's so thirsty in the des desert and you see like a mirage ahead of like water. I'm like having these, I'm like, is that water? You know, on the road ahead, I'm like, I'm just gonna dive into this water. I don't care if it's dirty and gross. Like I'm diving in, I'm so thirsty. My mouth is, is dry. And then I see an oasis. I see oasis ahead of me. It's like this dream land. It's, you know, kind of flickering green. It's this beautiful BP fuel station. <laughs> and I'm just like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. I knew you were good. And uh, I go there. I, go, I pull over and I get the biggest, best looking Red Bull I've ever seen in my life. And I know that has mixed reviews. It's terrible. I scull that thing. It's so, so quick. It's bad for you. I know. I get it. And, and I scull that thing. And who knows when you drink something like that, probably none of you good people or water people, right? But you drink something like that, and then straight after, you just you regret it. You regret it. Like, I was so thirsty, I sculled this thing. And then I was like, I instantly regret that because I'm actually more thirsty now. Like, I'm actually more thirsty. And I, I think this is a, such a, a thing that we relate to when it comes to, to, to faith. Is that I don't think the problem is that we are thirsty or not. But actually, what are we drinking? What are we drinking? You know, who do we run to and what do we fill our lives with? Because if we aren't careful... While Jesus gives us this open invitation, which is what we, we spoke about, we can so easily go everywhere but Jesus. He gives us this open invitation. He invites us all, but we go everywhere but trying to fill our lives, trying to quench that thirst, but it just doesn't quite fit. It just doesn't quite work. We, it's like um, I've heard someone describe it before. It's like, it's like we have this God-shaped hole inside of each one of us. We're kind of, you know, whether we know it or not, we're yearning for God. And even when we're at our thirst, thirstiest, the body is crying out for, for living water. You know, for me, when I'm on that bike, I was crying out for, for just normal water. I was just crying out for, and your body might be crying out for living water, but so easy, it's so easy for each one of us to just drink other things that ultimately make us thirsty, make us more thirsty. And we're just craving all the more for that space to be filled. So Jesus here says, come to me and drink. I have the living water that will last. No relationship, no job, no tradition, no ceremony, addiction, achievement will ever satisfy that thirst within. And so for us, simply, we've just got to go to him. We've got to run to him and fill our lives with his presence, fill our lives with his presence. He's going to be the only one that can fill that space. So the next part of the verse, Jesus says, whoever believes in me, as scriptures has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. By this spirit, by this he meant, the spirit whom those believed in him uh, were later to receive. Up until that uh, time, the spirit had not yet been given since Jesus had not yet been glorified. So I want to break this into two um, parts. And so the first part, it kind of begins with, you know, we already established that we've got to come to Jesus, but it also begins with a, a, a kind of a, a further on that, that we, with our part to play, with what we've got to do. It says, whoever believes in me, whoever believes in me. Now, if you look at it at first, it actually has a little more depth than kind of your first glance, believes, because that Greek word for believes in this passage, it actually translates to this word, uh, pistevo, uh, which means... It has a little bit more depth than kind of just, the, I guess, the belief that sometimes we might just think. But it says to put one's faith. So this, the word believe means to put one's faith in with an implication that actions will follow. That actions will follow. So believes, it's more than just a, a blind belief. It's more than just kind of, you know, I believe in my, my footy team, which, by the way, in WA, no one should. Um, you know, we don't, don't believe in football at all. Um, but, you know, it's not just throwing up a prayer and just hoping. It's not just kind of, you know, you know, I believe in God, but, you know, it doesn't really affect me. No, no, no. This is, a, you know, I when I believe, it, I put everything into this. This kind of makes a difference. This, this word believe, it's, it's not a, a kind of I guess a still word, but it's actually a doing word. It's something that, that changes us. It, it, it's actions will follow. That while the invitation is open, 
We've actually got to rock up to the party. We've actually got to attend. We've actually got to go. This is our part to play. Whoever believes is whoever puts their faith, whoever puts their trust and their dependence in God. Now, the second part to this is we start to get a picture of what this living water, a.k.a. the Spirit of God in us, that's what the, that last part talks about, living water is, is what it actually looks like inside of us. So the rivers of living water, so it says rivers of living water will flow from within them. I really like that word flow. I really like the word, and I, uh, and I don't know if you've ever thought about it. It might be something strange to think about, but, but Jesus actually wants his spirit to flow within you. He wants, you, he wants his spirit to actually move within you. If you look at the, the Bible references to the spirit actually in our lives, more often than not, it's always this, well, more often than not, it's this picture of movement. It's this picture of something that is alive, that is breathing. Um, you, know, the, you see the spirit represented by, by fire. We see the spirit represented by, by wind, and we actually will sing a, a song about a fresh wind in just a moment. Um, we see the, the, the spirit also represented by water. And it's not just a, you know, a, a still river or a, a stagnant lake, but it's this wild river. It's this wild river. It's something that is moving, this picture of movement. And furthermore to that, it will flow deep within us. It'll be a river that flows from deep within us. Some other translations, if you're um, you know, interested in reading a little bit more widely, it says actually out, you know, that word within is actually talking about being out of our belly, out of our, our heart, meaning that his spirit actually is coming from the core of who we are. It's coming from the deep places um, that it just overwhelms us. The spirit flowing, it, it just brings life. It brings energy. It overflows. It empowers. It encourages it equips, it, it changes us. And by the Spirit, we may have life. We may have life. I'm going to welcome the, the team up. And we're going to, I just want to uh, jump into a, a scripture here as well. And I, the, the, I don't know if you've ever thought about this, but the writer of, um, of each gospel kind of portrays Jesus in a different way. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Um, you know, there's obviously lots of stories that are very similar. But each, each, um, each kind of author has a slight bias or I guess has a slight kind of thing that they're trying to portray in Jesus that's really important. It's dependent on kind of the audience, maybe also dependent on what they saw. Um, now, John is the interesting one because he actually literally, he writes out in his gospel the reason why he wrote it. He gives, he gives what he was trying to do, his aim. And so he, the purpose of what was written, he says, is so Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. So Jesus did... You know, many other signs, miracles, things like that, but, you know, he can only fit it so much in, so choose not to, fit, to um, put them in the book. But he says, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. So that's like one of the first parts that we looked at. But here's, here's the thing that is important for us is that, and by believing, you may have life in his name. Think about that, John. John's saying, you know, if there's one thing I can get the people to understand in my accounts of Jesus is that, number one, he's the son of God, but number two, that you would have life by believing his name, that it would actually change the way that you live, that it would bring energy and that the spirit would actually flow within you. It means it's pretty important, right, that the spirit would flow within us. Now, as I said, we're going to sing a song called Fresh Wind. Um, unfortunately, it's not a song called Fresh Water, so it didn't quite line up, but um, no, it's a great song talking about the Holy Spirit. And I'm really, really believing that God would drop a new, fresh experience of His presence into your life today. That, you know, for some of us, I actually want to pray a prayer for some of us that, you know, maybe we're feeling a little bit dry. Some of us, you know, you look at the, I guess some of that imagery of, you know, of God moving of, you know, this wild river. For some of us, you're like, that's not the picture of my life. That's not the picture of my faith at the moment. And I'm feeling a little bit dry, maybe a little bit stagnant. Or for whatever reason, you're, you're thirsty and, you you know, you, you're just not feeling it. You're just like, you know, God, I don't know whether it's, I'm just feeling distant at the moment. And so I just want to, I just want to pray a really simple prayer over each one of us that, that God would just drop a new, fresh revelation into your life, that He would drop His presence, that it would, uh, the Spirit would flow into each one, um, whether you've been in church your whole life or here for your first time. As we heard at the, at the, at the start, that it is an open invitation that anyone can, can actually accept. So I want to encourage you to, to, to take up the invitation. 
believe in him and God will drop fresh vision, fresh life into you. So when you stand to your feet, I want to pray a prayer over us. If you're a praying person, why don't you, you know, just get yourself into a posture of prayer. If you want to close your eyes and I guess just to, just to focus on God. If you, if, if you want, you might see some people even putting out their hands. That's something to say, God, I just want to receive from you. God, I want to, I want to just engage with what you have for me. And I want to just read a, read a prayer over us and, and pray that there would be a fresh touch of the Holy Spirit on each person. It'd be a fresh wind that God would pour out his presence in a new way on us this morning. Let's pray. God, Lord, I pray for each person who is trusting you for a fresh touch this morning. God, we realize how desperately we need your touch in our lives. And so therefore, I ask you to come. By your Holy Spirit, would you blow the very wind of heaven on our lives, on our hearts, on our minds. God, I pray that your presence, your spirit would be flowing it would flow like a wild river. God, I pray those dry spaces, God, may you bring water, living water to those places, God, where we've been searching for other things, we've been searching for answers in other places, God, may we come to you and may you be the difference maker and may you drop that water that our body, our, our souls so crave. So God, I pray simply, would you just pour your spirit out in a new way? Pour your spirit out. And I pray that you would have your way in this space. We pray these things in your name. Amen.